Hi, I'm going to talk about the most basic assumption of the theory of relativity, which is that the speed of light is constant. Speed of light does not depend on the observer, on the speed of the observer, or the speed of the source of light. This is the most basic assumption of the theory that Einstein addresses. I'm going to argue that this assumption isn't quite correct. It's not quite what most people take it to be. And so we will have to reassess the special theory of relativity. But first, we need to look at classical relativity. Imagine a car driving along the road in a certain direction. Let's say it's moving at 100 miles an hour in that direction. Now imagine another car driving alongside. This one's doing 60 miles an hour in the same direction. So the relative speed of the blue to the red will be 100 minus 60, which equals 40 miles an hour. This is from the subtraction of velocities. Now imagine the blue car again moving at 100 miles an hour and a yellow car moving in the opposite direction at 60 miles per hour. The relative speed now is 100 plus 60, which equals 160 miles per hour. This is the addition of velocities. Now imagine a train moving along the track in that direction. Velocity v. Now also imagine there's an observer watching the train. If the train's moving at 10 meters per second, then it will be 10 meters per second relative to the observer. Now imagine there's a man standing on the train and he's walking along the train in the same direction as the train at 2 meters per second. So his relative speed to the observer will be 10 plus 2, which equals 12 meters per second. You simply add them together. This is Galilean or classical relativity. In classical physics, we simply add the two velocities together, u plus v. In relativity physics, though, it's a different formula. It's u plus v divided by 1 plus uv over c squared, where c is the speed of light. How we arrive at this formula, we will deal with in another video. The problem posed by light really begins in the 19th century with James Clerk Maxwell and his equations governing light, light as an electromagnetic waveform moving at the speed of light. And according to Maxwell's equations, it will always move with the same speed. This seemed to be verified by the Michelson-Morley experiment about 20 years later. So the problem posed at that time, which Einstein addressed, was why is light an exception. Everything else moves relative to an observer, except light. And that is the whole point of the theory of relativity, how to deal with this anomaly. So back to the train again, moving at 10 meters per second. This time the man on the train isn't walking, but rather he's holding a torch and he shines a beam of light from the torch in the direction of the train and of course the light travels at sea. What is the relative speed of the beam of light to the observer? Is it simply the speed of the train plus c? The answer is no. It doesn't work like that in the theory of relativity. Our new formula, u plus v divided by 1 plus uv over c squared. What happens if we try to add the speed of light to the speed of the train? In other words, what if u equals c? The formula now becomes c plus v divided by 1 plus cv over c squared, which equals c. So you cannot add the speed of light to the speed of the train.
So the new formula that we have would seem to be decisive. It shows that you cannot add the speed of light to the speed of anything else. And it seems to vindicate both Maxwell and Michelson de Morley. But I think there's a problem here, because if you notice, it already contains C. It seems to beg the question. We seem to be assuming that the speed of light is constant in order to derive the formula which shows that it's constant. And that's not allowed, so we'll need to find a different approach. According to Einstein, and according to Maxwell, and Michelson and Morley, there is something special about light, about the speed of light. It is constant. The speed of light is not relative to an observer. And I want to question this. I want to seriously question it. Why should light be special? What is so special about light? Light is a physical quantity. It is part of the physical world. It interacts with the physical world. It affects the physical world. It is affected by the physical world. Why does it not just, why does it not obey the same rules as everything else? And I say it does. But that doesn't mean that Maxwell uh, and Michael Simorley are necessarily wrong. So I want to distinguish between two different speeds. I want to introduce what I call the proper speed of light as opposed to the relative speed. So proper speed and relative speed are two different ways of measuring speed, not just for light. And so that's what I want to look at next, proper speed. To illustrate what we mean by proper speed, imagine the blue car again, traveling at its top speed of 120 miles an hour. This is its maximum speed. Now there's another car coming in the opposite direction, going at 80 miles an hour. So quite simply, its relative speed to each other is 200 miles an hour. But that's greater than its top speed. How can it be greater than its maximum speed? This is because the top speed is its proper speed and does not equal its relative speed. Proper speed and relative speed are two different ways of measuring speed and proper speed does not equal relative speed. Another way of looking at it is to imagine again the man walking along the train in the same direction as the moving train. Also imagine another train coming in the opposite direction at 5 meters per second with a stationary observer. Now the man walking at 2 meters per second, the man in red, his relative velocity to observer number 1 is 12 meters per second, as we've already seen. His velocity relative to the approaching train is 12 plus 5, which is 17. But he's still walking at 2 meters per second. He's always walking at 2 meters per second, and that is his proper speed. Because he can't walk at 12 meters per second or 17 meters per second. That is his proper speed. Right, so the man on the train is walking along the train at 2 meters per second. I say that is his proper speed. His relative speed to the stationary observer is 12 meters per second. His relative speed to the guy on the other train is 17 meters per second. Fair enough. But he's not walking. At, nobody can walk at 12 meters per second. Nobody can walk at 17 meters per second. He walks at 2 meters per second to all observers in all frames of reference. That is his proper speed. I'm not saying it's an absolute speed, but maybe it is, but that's his proper speed. So you have to distinguish between proper speed and relative speed. The proper speed doesn't change unless he changes it. So we must make this distinction. To apply this to light, 
Imagine the train once again, but this time there's a vertical laser beam which travels at C in the vertical direction and V in the horizontal direction because it moves with the train. If we then turn the laser beam in different angles, it still moves at C along whatever angle it's being aimed at, and it still moves at V in the horizontal direction. So why can't we add C to V? Of course, the new formula says we can't do this, that we will always end up with C. But this must be wrong. Another way to look at it is to imagine a photon being fired along inside the train as the train moves. Now that photon is moving through space, through space and time. The space itself is also moving. So why does the, the photon not take on the speed of the train? speed of the space through which it is moving. So it would seem that the photon moving along the train is really no different from the man walking along the moving train, provided we make this distinction between proper speed and relative speed. And this makes a huge difference to the special theory of relativity. So in conclusion, we can see that if we make the distinction between proper speed and relativistic speed, that we will have to look at the theory of relativity in a completely different way. The absolute basis of the special theory of relativity is that the speed of light is constant. It does not depend on a frame of reference. It does not depend on an observer like everything else. And from this, we derive the Lorentz transform. And from that, we have to make a distinction between relative length and proper length, relative time, proper time, proper mass, relativistic mass, but all depending on the constancy of the speed of light. If we distinguish between proper speed and relative speed and apply it to light, then Maxwell is still correct when he says the speed of light is constant. That's still correct, but only the proper speed is constant. We still can have a relative speed, even for light. And that means a completely different, total di difference to how we derive the Lorentz transform and a complete difference to how we look at the special theory of relativity. It will have to be completely revised in, in the light of this distinction.